people are still concerned about social distancing, people are still concerned about the possibility of a second wave, and yet the local economy is going pretty well. The drive market seems to be uh, coming back, um, real estate is going well, and so the local Coolum economy um, isn't doing too badly at all. But as we know, uh, we're not through the woods yet. COVID-19 continues, um, and we need to make sure that we're keeping both people's health and their livelihoods um, looked after. I, th I think the key thing people are concerned about right now is to make sure that where there are outbreaks, uh, Victoria and New South Wales, that they are contained as best as they can be. Um, you know, we Australians are a pragmatic lot. Uh, nobody is expecting that Queensland is not going to see um, any more people um, who, um, who end up um, falling victim to COVID-19. But we need to make sure too that we, we don't operate on some knee-jerk reaction. As the PM made it pretty clear some weeks ago, we need to make sure we have local capability to respond where there's an outbreak. Um, thankfully, on the Sunshine Coast, we have a very good health system and, uh, and I've got every confidence they're doing what they can to prepare for any possibility. Uh, meanwhile, uh, we've all got a job to do locally and that is we've got to look after each other. We've still got a social distance. Um, if people um, feel more comfortable wearing a mask, um, they should be wearing a mask if they wish to. Um, and we need to, uh, to be open-minded and keep an eye out for each other. Where there has been some concerns raised by residents over the last few days, it has been that they're seeing complacency creep in. Um, unfortunately, this is not over yet. Um, the more we wish to protect our loved ones, our neighbourhoods and our way of life, the more we've got to make sure we are continuing to demonstrate some discipline around social distancing, um, washing our hands and, and those basics. Um, this is the new way, this is the new normal. We all have to get used to it and make sure it's a, a part of our daily life. Coolum's, Coolum's done okay since the obviously the return of the, the domestic travellers from Queensland and obviously since the, the borders opened from New South Wales we've had quite a good school holiday run so we've done quite well in that respect. Um, how bad was it during the peak of the... Uh, right at the very peak obviously a lot of businesses were closed, the surf club was closed, the pub was closed, you know most places were closed in Coolum at the time. It is, it is a fear for us obviously if uh, the borders get reclosed and obviously the, the, you know, the, the uh, New South Wales tourists stop coming and obviously the other interstate tourists other than Victorians can't come, it would be a concern to us. See, the, the job keeper is keeping people alive at the moment so it would be interesting to see what happens when, if and when that finishes. There's been a lot of discussions through this week about what we might be doing with job keeper and job seeker. Um, as you can understand people are very interested because there's nothing more important than certainty. Now, whether you're a business or you're a resident, an individual, you want a degree of certainty about what's happening. Uh, I have been pleased that uh, people have been overwhelmingly positive about uh, how the government has been managing the COVID crisis to date. But there are some really hard decisions to move forward. Um, and thankfully, uh, the people on the Sunshine Coast seem to be very understanding of that. Uh, understanding that um, every dollar we spend is ultimately now um, dollars that we borrow. But at the same time, there are people in need, there are companies in need. And I think from a government point of view, we have to continue with the same principle we started with, and that is temporary targeted relief. We need to target those sectors that are most in need and target the individuals most in need. And so long as we stick to those fundamental principles, then I think we will continue to govern through this uh, unprecedented crisis as well as we have thus far. So how do you make sure that those tar that target is so the people who actually need it, not the people who are just the noises? I think we have to continue to be evidence-led. And uh, if, if anything, uh, both the federal government and the national cabinet has made it a priority to be taking advice. Um, indeed, a lot of that has been health advice because keeping people healthy has been the priority. But when it comes to the economics, of course, we also have to make sure that we're being led by the evidence and the assessments. Um, people in a democracy should absolutely voice their opinion. We welcome that. Um, people have the right to voice their opinion. And the reason I'm out here on the corner of streets every single day this week is to hear those opinions. 
but ultimately when it comes to public policy, government really is the custodian of money belonging to the people or borrowed by the people. And so it has to go to those people most in need, not just those people who are uh, voicing their opinion the loudest. It's important that we have one foot in today and one foot in tomorrow, and that's been our approach so far as a government, um, where I think the residents and the businesses are focused right now is the next few months. Um, we have been trying to ensure that on one hand we're stimulating the economy, on the other hand that we are keeping companies engaged with their employees and then helping those who fall through the cracks. Um, that's the immediate priority. At the same time though, the government is looking at how the world is going to look post-COVID. Um, we have task forces um, that are looking at those challenges at the moment. Um, and they look at uh, broader areas of reform and where we as a nation need to ensure that we have sovereign capability. Um, there was an announcement only recently about what we're doing um, about ensuring greater sovereign capability when it comes to defence. Um, and as the Prime Minister has mooted um, there are other areas of uh, economic um, reform that the government has a, uh, an open uh, ear to and, uh, and that advice continues to come in and we're looking forward to seeing what the Treasurer says on the 23rd of this month where he'll be making an economic statement. Well, if, if you look at history, at times of major crisis, at times of catastrophes, uh, countries take a step back and they look at the way they operate. And that's happening today. Uh, there is no doubt that we need to have greater local capability in Australia when it comes to PPE, for example. There are key strategic industries that we know as Australians uh, we need to make sure that we are in control of. But at the same time, um, we are still a, an open, liberal trading economy. Um, we rely on investment um, that comes overseas. A lot of our local businesses, even here on the Sunshine Coast, export our products through trading with overseas countries. There's, there, there's no plan to be changing um, our operation as an open, liberal democracy. Um, but at the same time, we do need to look at strategic industries where we need our own local sovereign capability and we need a stronger, robust industrial policy, particularly around advanced manufacturing.